Let's talk for a minute about the blood sugar, inflammation, and insulin resistance. I love this conversation. I don't think people realize they, they love to have a cookie. I do too. I'm a human. You have to live your life. But I think that we really miss the mark when we are eating everything, refined sugar in the form of powders and flours. When we have those refined grains, so many things happen in our body that are so detrimental. Increasing insulin promotes insulin resistance, right? Which when we are not effectively utilizing our glucose, this is super inflammatory. We have high circulating levels of glucose, which happens in the case of eating sugars and refined grains. We start to attach those sugar molecules to proteins and fats in our body that causes advanced glycated end products. Mm -hmm. These things then attach to immune cells. Immune cells then release cytokines. So then you just have a bunch of circulating inflammation. And then that's not it. That's just one mechanism. If you increase in glucose in the blood causes an increase in the expression of genes through a protein we call NF-kappa B that will create more inflammatory cytokines like tumor necrosis factor or interleukin-6. These are all things you can look up. And that's also not it. There's more things. You know, it causes dysbiosis, which we talked mm -hmm. about. Anything that's inflammatory to the gut is inflammatory to the body. You're just exposing it to the insults of the outside world. So all of these things are a part of inflammation that is really immediate when you're eating things that are high in refined sugars and refined grains. You know, in this insulin resistance, you know, impacts our hormones on such a profound way, right? We know that insulin resistance is going to cause inflammation. It decreases the release of estrogen. Estrogen itself is anti-inflammatory. So you get into this almost circular loop, right? You also put on more abdominal fat. Fat itself, right, can interfere with hormone production, causes more inflammation, and you get on a pathway that it really does take meaningful and purposeful change to reverse some of these problems that are happening inside right. your body. So right. that one cookie, you know, if your body is not constantly fighting against inflammation, yeah. one thing I tell my patients is it can handle the cookie fine because it can see that glucose, it can handle it. That inflammation is not a big deal. Right. But when you're constantly eating those refined foods, those processed foods, and you're challenging your body and your gut and your gut microbiome is off and your gut is leaky, then yeah. it's not going to be able to recover from that cookie quite as easily. Well, I want you to think about it in this way. If you are always activating your immunity, it's like fighting the flu 24-7. Your body doesn't have energy to focus on anything else. Certainly not being healthy, but definitely not having a viable pregnancy. And then I tell patients, I love this kind of metaphor for a fire. If you have inflammation brewing in the body, if I throw kenneline on the fire, it just keeps that fire going. Oh. If I can put that all out and I can dampen that inflammation, and I usually tell my patients it takes two weeks of really clean plant-based eating to get all that inflammation down, then I can throw a little kenneling on the fire and it doesn't cause a big brew. It just makes you, it has a threshold for which your body can handle some of that inflammation and then you can have the cookie. Right. So it's all about <laughs> balance, but also being really purposeful. It's not about restricting, like you can never have the cookie, right. but it's about setting the foundation for your day by your choices so that you can have the cookie and it's not such a big deal. I agree. I totally agree. Tell me about, you know, maybe the average woman who comes to your practice and the mistakes that they are making when it comes to their dietary choices. Because I'm sure you hear some of the same things over and over, like I'm doing everything right, I'm gaining weight, or I just can't get pregnant or my hormones are off. What do you see as a constant or a really common problem that people are having? The, the most common complaint that I get when people come into my office is weight gain. And it's a slowed metabolism, and it's based on these things we've talked about, refined grains, refined sugars, people not really understanding actually what those things look like, having a lot of protein bars that, you know, have chemical emulsifiers or are processed in order to keep their shelf life, and not really understanding that those aren't whole foods, even though they have health claims on the packaging. So it is almost like taking, and it, it takes a lot of time and it takes mm -hmm. a lot of energy, but fine tooth combing their nutrition. And of course, you know, they think they're doing well, they're picking the better options in their mind, but really getting back to the simple basics of a whole food plant-based diet. Now, 
They also are eating usually a lot of meat, which I have to, you know, I don't always say you can, I say you can eat meat and still be healthy. Like you say, you just want a robust plant variety around that. And as long as those healthy nutrient dense plant foods are really outnumbering the things like meat and cheese, you can have those to some degree. I really, really harp on having those things in moderation, but we are not really good at what, knowing what moderation, moderation is. is. Yeah. I always tell my patients, especially, you know, I see patients who are going through infertility, right? And we're often signing up for IVF and there's high stakes. So I usually say, take these things out of your diet for 30 days, right? right. It's not permanent, yeah. but I want you to be almost forced to fill the gap with plants. Because what happens is if you're filling half your plate with chicken, right, at every meal, there's only so much room and you're going to fall into the same habits. But suddenly, if I say, oh, well, you're not going to have meat in your diet at all for this time period, or you're only going to do it once a week, or really limit what they're used to, they have to explore these alternative options that they haven't. And then they feel better. Yeah. Right? I know. I love it. I love the feeling for them when they're like, oh, yeah, I have the energy. And then when I put that thing that I was eating before all the time and didn't notice a difference back in my body, I feel the joint aches. I feel that kind of crashing fatigue. The inflammation. Absolutely. You directly can feel the inflammation. You can. I always tell my patients that, too. Yeah, we can check some blood levels, but I don't need to check blood to tell me what you're already telling me. Right? right? You're giving me the symptoms that I know you're dealing with an inflammatory problem. And if you can learn just the you, the us as a whole, to listen to our body, but it often does take removing these things for a while and feeling how good you can feel right. to really realize the impact some of these food choices can have really quite immediately when you eat them. Yeah. And I want to encourage people that it is not restrictive to be whole food plant-based. When you, I, t I have a blank sheet of paper with 30 blanks and we can talk about why there's 30, but it has on the top instructions. Fill this out with all the plant foods you already gravitate towards, which when you put them on a piece of paper is many usually. And it's not just fruits and vegetables, but fruits and vegetables, whole grains, nuts, seeds, and legumes. Again, they have all of the micro and Ma they have all the macro and micronutrients in various supply and the variety gives you everything you need, right? And so when they start to fill that out and they say, oh, I like all these fruits. Oh, I like all these vegetables. Oh, I do these grains and these legumes and these nuts and these seeds. They're at 30 in no time. Mm -hmm. And then I say, go to the grocery store, make this the foundation of your meal. Get on chat GPT and ask AI to create you some meals oh, this week for this list that you have. And in and in general, it's it's fabulous. And people again feel better. I ask them for two weeks. Thirty days is great. Thirty days is great because that's when how about how much a cycle is, and they can really see a difference in their their menstrual period. Why do we see some of these struggles? You know, for women specifically, right? Yeah. The slowing down of the metabolism, the putting on extra weight. Why is this around midlife? Right? It's directly tied to our hormone change. Yeah, I think we just. Over time, there's a lot that builds up in terms of our metabolism. We have given so many insults to the body over time. We have decreased our ovarian function over time. We have gummed up the mechanisms with storing fat in the wrong places. Things that happen over time tend to present themselves after we've had that fertility phase, after we've had children. Our body really gets into a state of, I'm just not functioning optimally anymore. Mm -hmm. I've I've worked through all of these insults that you've given me, and now I'm slowing down. It's like the wear and tear of your life mm -hmm. does catch up with all of us at some point, right. and it's up to us to really think about decreasing these inflammatory exposures on what we do. And you can do a lot. It's not too late. You can reverse some of that fatigue and some of that energy imbalance and really start to feel better now. I love that you said that. And I always tell patients, every little change you make is meaningful because very often patients may listen to this or somebody may hear this and say, well, I'm not going to do all of those things. So there's no use of me doing any of it, right. right? And that's not what either of us are saying because every little in fruit and vegetable that you take in that you didn't use to, everything that you're kind of cutting out, each opportunity to treat your body kinder, mm -hmm. give it the nutrients that it needs to function better and to decrease inflammation 
those each one of those matters. It's not that it has to be all or nothing, right? Exactly. Right. And I tell people just when you're out, start looking for the plant foods that are available and try and get a little bit of each. So when we talk about the variety and why that's so important, one of the biggest gut studies was the American Gut Project. They took 11,000 individuals from the UK and the US. They mapped out their genome and they figured out which ones had the best microbiome. And they correlated that to an 83 question survey on lifestyle. And there was only one question that correlated to the people who had the best versus the worst gut microbiome to their lifestyle. And that was how many plant foods do you get in your diet per week? Those who got less than 10, unfortunately, this trendy carnivore diet scares me because those are going to fit in that category, right. had the worst gut microbiome. And the ones who got more than 30, 30 or more was the answer. That was D. 30 plus, right? They had the best gut microbiome. So there is nothing magical about the number 30 that just happened to be the last number on the question. So when we think about getting a variety, shoot for 40, shoot for 50, shoot for 60, but 30 is a good place to start. 